Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flower Gold Wizard Channel. I'm Jason, a part-time gold prospector based in Wisconsin. These are my mining partners, Bowser, Rigby, and Rex. Rigby, of course, a world-famous gold sniffing hound. Today we're going to go and do a little bit of panning. We're going to do some sluicing because, yep, there's gold in Wisconsin. And we just kind of came across a really beautiful spot. And we have worked here before, but the water's been so darn high lately. It's been, I don't know, a month and a half, almost two months since I've been able to get out here to get a shovel wet. We've been working inland here and there, and it's some dry creek beds, but they stink. But this is nice, fresh water. It'll be a great change of pace. So let's see if we can find some gold. And when I say came across this little spot, I don't mean we just saw it and it looked beautiful. It does. <laughs> I mean, we tested. And there's a great big huge log that goes under the water. Now that's an old cedar log right there. That has been there an extremely long time. Cedar trees last for forever <laughs> underneath water. I tell you what, we're in a big old cedar swamp right here, as you can see. Uh-huh. So that's been there a good amount of time, and we've gotten some really nice pieces of gold out of it in here. Uh, but you gotta wait until the water comes down just a little bit, or you'll never keep it on your shovel with that amount of water swirling around like this in there. And uh, we started working off our way that way just a little bit, and we put some rocks down here or up on top of this this uh, this log to try to keep the water flow. Uh, from being so powerful so you can possibly keep some material on your shovel. Isn't that right? <laughs> He's part cow. So we're going to do the same thing today. I'm going to gather up a couple of these larger cobbles right up in here. Maybe grab a couple of those big ones. We're going to make a slightly more of a dam right there. Now how do we set up a sluice on something like this? Well, I brought one today and it's right over here. And it's got little leg holders. So we'll be able to put this sluice on that waterfall right there. Up, down, left, right, anywhere we want. We'll be able to get just the right amount of pitch and just the right amount of water for the sluice system we brought today. Now it's important to note that you don't want to just bring any old sluice system down here. Uh, any sluice will catch big gold, but the stuff around here can be extremely, extremely small like hard rock mining small. Uh, and this sawtooth mat here I had 3D printed. Uh, these work fantastic. I mean, it's plastic, it's it's not very sticky, but it's the science behind it. These little bitty riffles right here, believe it or not, will capture the smallest of gold like nobody's business. So we're gonna go ahead and let's see here. I brought a tub, I brought my classifier, I brought a concentrate pail. We're going to go ahead and fill up a tub of material after we get our dam fixed up over there. We're going to run some material. You're supposed to dig in the water. Come on, Rigby, you gotta show these guys what's going on around here, these young boys. All right, I think that's probably gonna do it. Uh, basically, just I didn't need very many rocks at all. Got a few on there, but look at the difference in the amount of water flow compared to right there. I mean, there's probably a little more right there now than there was before, because I put those rocks there. But now we'll have access to this whole corner right here. And we'll be able to work up in there towards the bank just a little bit. And uh, we've gotten nice pieces out of there. We've got a really nice piece out of there. But all kinds of flower gold. It's just a matter of putting in the numbers. That's right. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my classifier. And we're going to begin. And by numbers, I mean buckets. 
buckets and buckets and buckets full of material. Uh, the gold in Wisconsin is going to be pretty darn sparse no matter where you are. Uh, there's some places better than others, but it's a numbers game no matter where you're at. So if your back can handle it and you can put in the numbers, you can do okay. Now, if you guys can see, that tub back there is overflowing. But that's no time to stop and slow down and relax. That's not what this is about. When you go prospecting, it's all about work. That's it. Oh, Rigby, turn it off. Well, I guess it's okay to monkey around a little bit. After all, it is about the fun. And jerky. The boys just told me it's snack time. So we'll go ahead and have a little snack. Oh, this jerky is awesome. I'm telling you what. I get that from Perucas in Anago. Oh, this stuff is delish. My boys love it. Where's Rex Aroni? Come here, buddy. Yeah. They need that. They're hard work miners. Cobbles, everybody. All right, now we're going to go ahead and get our sluice set up. I'll just flip it over and I'll loosen up these, these little wing bolts here. There we go. And when you're done for the day, you always want to screw those all the way back in or a long ways. Otherwise, they have a tendency of working their way out. You know, Murphy's Law. All right, we'll get those in there just like that. You being big helper, huh? All right, tighten them up a little bit. And we'll adjust them when we get down into the water. Just like that. Throw our sluice in, make sure it's in there the right way. <laughs> Just like that. Get it under our indicator flap. She's ready to roll. All right, now we've got it in the water. Uh, I see a lot of guys out there fumbling around and uh, adjusting and readjusting and readjusting and readjusting. A uh, couple of quick tips I, I'd like to offer is uh, go ahead and loosen up the back ones and get that back down just to where it touches the water. That will allow you the most pitch up front. Red boat, there. Just like that, we'll tighten it up. And if that's flat with the water in the back, then you know it's fairly level. Then we'll drop our front down to the desired depth of water. Now in this case, uh, this is a fairly passive mat. And passive by meaning it doesn't have these huge vortexes. It's got really small, teeny weeny vortexes behind each one of those little saw teeth. But that's what you need, that's what you want to catch this minute, absolute powder flower gold. So we'll go ahead and we'll drop down our front edge just till it gets in the water. And boat. There. Now in doing so, that brought the front end or the back end up just a little bit because it's kind of like a teeter-totter. So I'll drop that back down just, just a hair. Just like that. Get down. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful. 
and then one more, probably one more adjustment up in the front here, and we're gonna be ready to roll. That looks pretty good. Let's throw a scoop on there, and we'll see how the material reacts to this speed of water and pitch. All right, there's a little look at the water flow. I mean, it looks like a lot, but that's 10 inches wide right there. We'll go ahead and get rid of some of them bubbles. There we go. But the true test will be how the material reacts. Once you grab a scoop, throw it on there. And I want that to creep down there pretty good and slow to give all that material an opportunity to come in contact with the mat. It's so far so good. It doesn't look like it's uh, going off any one way in particular. You can kind of note some of those black pebbles staying put left and right. That's a good indicator that your system is running fairly smooth and level. And boy, I think we nailed it. I think so for sure. Now I'm getting a bunch of material right here, kind of about building up there because my indicator mat flap is sitting up in the air a little bit. <laughs> but that's no big deal. I'll just push that down a little bit and I'll dump the material down here a little bit further. Then I won't get so much leftover when I'm done. So let's feed a whole bunch of this on there. Yeah, that's real good. And we'll, uh, we'll see if we can't find a great big gold nugget. I doubt it in this mat, but we should be able to find some powder. Yes, sir, some powder. And believe it or not, there's actually a reason I set up in the exact spot I did. One, I have all these big rocks right here. I can put my tub right up on it. It's elevated. I'm standing in the hole that I just dug. I don't even have to bend over for the material. Sluice is right there. One little lean, and you're in like Flint. Makes for a long day when you gotta bend all the way over to your feet or kneel down and feed a sluice for two or three hours at a crack. Yeah. You know, it's times like this, we're just sitting back, relaxing, and I get to thinking uh, how much I appreciate you guys. I really do. Uh, we're just out here having fun, do, uh, doing what I think most average Joes can go out and expect to do. Uh, we find some gold here and there, sometimes a bunch and sometimes none at all, but uh, we're usually out there just having fun. We mix it up a little bit. And uh, I, I noticed that you know a lot of the channels out there that I started watching myself and quite honestly helped me get into this hobby. <laughs> week after week, it's break new record this and new record that and the most gold ever found week after week after week. I mean, come on. <laughs> but uh, kind of started out me just saying thank you guys for sticking around. Yeah, we really do appreciate you. It's just all about us going out and having some fun. Average Joe crack a 150 and, uh, <laughs> and sharing it with you guys. There just happens to be a camera right there rolling. So thanks a lot. All right, we've got all that material run through. Now let's see if we can't get the sluice mat up and out of the water in our tub over there. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. We'll tip it to one side. Let all that material get rid of that water. Then it won't go sloshing around in there. There we go. Okay. All right, with the help of my assistant here, we'll make that happen. <laughs> all right, I'll grab it. And if possible, just slide it out. <laughs> Looks like there's, we got some rocks in there. Grab that in there. There we go. Perfect. Put it in my tub. Rinse it out. Oh, there's lots of material in there. That's one thing about this sawtooth mat. It holds on to a lot. But it only holds on to the best. Right. 
Let's see what's in it. I've got all that material in a pan. That is a monster, huge pile of black sand. That's just one clean oil. That thing holds onto a ton. So I just swift it back really quickly until I started seeing a little bit of gold. And there's some gold right there. Let me try to three that. That ain't a bad piece either. And the really super, super fine stuff just started to show up. But I noticed it was starting to float. So I, I just stopped panning. And we'll get this stuff back to the ranch where we can get some jet dry on it. And uh, run, it over a, run it over a sluice that uh, will run this down to about a teaspoon of material. And then we can uh, Then we can pan it out. You do this back at the ranch and things get quite a bit more productive. So we're gonna say adios to this place. Uh, we always have fun coming here. There's gold, there's numerous spots to choose from. I love it here. Love it. Well, now that it's time to pick everything up and make the hike out of here, I don't see the boys anywhere. Weird. I wonder who wants a treat. Anybody I know? Who wants one? Oh, there they are. <laughs> and we're back. We are back. Here's all our concentrates right over here. I just started getting everything ready. And I've got a 40 mesh classifier. We'll get that stuff uh, classified 40 mesh, pan everything bigger, run everything smaller over my new FGW cleanup sluice. But all that comes second. To the fridge of wonder that's right all right get that in there Oop, not on the ripples <laughs> and i'll squirt that all right in there piece of cake there we go i'll just spray a little water in there just like such piece of cake well, we've already got this larger material in a pan, and that's not much. Uh, matter of fact, this here isn't a whole lot either. Either, But this stuff is super micro powder, fine gold, and black sand, and it's difficult to separate. So we're going to get this down in my sluice, but we'll pan this out first. All the plus 40 material, just like this here. I'll even do it left-handed. Look at that. <laughs> there we go well, I, I think this might be the first time I ever tried to pan left handed so far so good that's probably good enough this larger material is plenty easy to pan and as expected as usual no gold in the bigs so we'll go ahead and get rid of that let's set up our sluice and we're ready to roll all we gotta do is turn on the water Oh yeah, this thing is designed to catch this exact gold right here. And it makes your cleanup times a lot more enjoyable if, <laughs> if you're sick of panning this powder fine black sand, trying to separate the little gold out of it. Well, this will do it. And I already see some gold in there. Heck yeah, heck yeah. Let's run through this stuff here. It's kind of like a really aggressive Miller table. I'm running it super slow, but there's really small grooves in here. And uh, it's doing exactly what it was designed to do. You can feed this fairly fast and just kind of let that sand creep on down. But it catches it. Mm-hmm. Let's throw one on there. See how that creeps on down there? I'm not washing all these riffles out. That's not what you want to do. See, there's some gold getting trapped in there. You just want to catch the gold, and then when you're done, you just turn it up a little bit at a time to wash some of that sand out real slow, and then you turn it up again, and you turn it up again, and you wind up with half the concentrates in this than you would, say, cleaning it out right now. That's right. All right, let's run the rest of this through there, see what we come up with. Well, I am just panning away here. We're slowly getting it. That's not a whole lot of black sand. If you look how big my sausage finger is there next to it, it's pretty thin, 
but the gold is mighty small and we're just starting to get the gold to start to show up on the top edge there and every once in a while it'll show through the show through the black sand as we're pulling it back like this you see every time we come back we're dragging a few thousand pieces of black sand with it and that's just what it takes a little bit of time but there is some gold showing up let's see if we can't get that in the three just to give you guys an idea of how small this gold is like that boulder right there that's way bigger than all those tiny dots up in there <laughs> way bigger holy smokes but it's coming we're getting there let's get it under the microscope take a peek all right we're all done panning here's our gold right here if you want to take a peek before it goes under the microscope not bad we got a good amount of pieces there we ran a fair amount of material today and let me slide that back under the under the glass here we'll take a little look Oh, up close and personal, it looks really chunky. Look at there, there's a big old giant flake. <laughs> and there's the black sand, a good example of it right there. You cannot even see that black sand in here. That is how small everything in this pan is. Super small, but super fun. That's why we do it, look at that. That's the battle, trying to battle that black sand for space in the sluice. Ooh, doggy! I just love this hobby. Mm -hmm. Now that's some beautiful gold. That's one of the reasons we do it. The other is just getting out there and having fun. And like I said before, we really appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. So until the next episode, like, share, subscribe. Please do leave a comment. It helps build our channel. Check out our Patreon page in the description box below. Flower Gold Wizards, out. Ha <laughs> ha